Hey everybody, welcome back. This is kind of my uh, second priority as far as things I wanted to get done back here in my woods during the habitat improvement season. So the first video I did for you guys, if you remember, we just made a trail. That was all we did. We made a trail that is gonna give us some better access to kind of what I'm calling like a home run stand. So we got that done. We'll spray it here when things uh, dry up, but that for the most part, that is done. This here today, what I wanna show you guys is basically I planted three things. I planted Miscanthus giganthus, I planted spruce trees, and I planted a couple apple trees. So I'm gonna flip the camera around. I'm gonna show you where I planted them, why I planted them, and just kind of what I'm hoping to gain from them. So stay tuned. All right, let's start with the Miscanthus giganthus. So what you guys are seeing right here, this Miscanthus that's growing, I've got just a couple, it's a little spotty. This is now, this would be year three Miscanthus. Um, and it's actually doing pretty well. Now I had screwed up on my first planting of this stuff and I had waited way too long to, uh, to basically get it in the ground after I received it. And I had it in a, a bucket that was moist. And basically the top of the bucket was fine, but the bottom half was all rotten. So this is where I started, you know, going around my food plot and you can see it did pretty well. And then as we go around further, you know, I basically have nothing growing on the, on the other half. So one thing that I liked, um, I guess with the first round is look at this stuff growing up through this wet ground. I mean, obviously it's springtime. It's really wet back here right now. Um, and it, this does dry out more than just standing water. But I mean, you can even see right here, the miscanthus shooting up new, new suckers, new shoots right through that water. So that's promising. I know it says not to, or I know it says it doesn't like wet feet, but this is kind of you know, the wetter half of my food plot, like look at this one, sending up all kinds of stuff. So what I did, um, this first planting I got off of Facebook market, I went ahead and bought some real world miscanthus. I bought two bags, so I bought 200 rhizomes. I actually put some up by my house to just serve as some privacy fencing and screening, and then the rest came back here. And we'll see how it does. I did, I did just one row. Now I know it's gonna say for a screen, you want more than one row, but my food plot is not very big. It's maybe a quarter of an acre. And I really just didn't wanna take up a ton of real estate in an area that, you know, it's just small. So I don't need it to be like a super crazy good screen that you guys are typically seeing on uh, on hunting shows or on you know habitat improvement groups. I really just need some screening and I just need some edge. I just need something that is different, you know, from my food plot to my woods here. So that's what we did. We got a bunch of rhizomes in here. We'll see how they do. Um, I'll let you guys know how the real world stuff does. We also did a uh, row of miscanthus here along my my little snow fence that divides my food plot. I did plot screen here two years ago that took really, really well. And it did an awesome job breaking up this food plot and encouraging movement, um, you know, right in front of my, my box blind there. So we definitely wanted to get miscanthus in the ground here. And honestly, probably once it starts, um, once it starts growing, starts taking up, we'll, we can probably even just get rid of this snow fence, depending on how it grows up through there. But this is, again, this is just to divide my plot. So deer, Hopefully don't skirt that back edge quite as much. Brings them right down in front of here for a nice uh, 18 yard shot. We got some licking branches um, for mock scrape and stuff there. It's worked well, uh, just something to break it up even more and give me that nice shot toward the blind is exactly what I'm looking for. Second thing I did, got a couple apple trees that we're gonna try. So I just figured since I was back here uh, planting not only miscanthus and those spruce trees, Thought I'd try a couple apple trees from Tractor Supply. So I picked up a couple, these are Anna apples and I am by no means a fruit tree expert. I just wanted to try it and see how a fruit tree would do in my ground. So this area of my food plot, this is a little higher. It kind of slopes down to this low area that I dug out just to help drain water. Um, so we'll see how these Anna apples do. They're uh, self-pollinating. I had some conduit and some uh, just some leftover fence. Hopefully I got enough fence around them because I didn't have a ton. Um, but hopefully, you know, the chicken wire down at the bottom keeps the rabbits off and hopefully this is a, a big enough cage to deter the deer for the most part. Also took a zip tie and just kind of, you know, tied it around here with some paracord just to give these apple trees some support in the wind, snow, uh, all that stuff. So. 
yeah, these were, you know, 35 bucks a piece. I figured it was worth a try to see if they'll grow back here because ideally, if they do or some, you know, just these, you know, fruit trees in general, if they do okay, this is an area that is higher ground. I'd really like to expand one day into more food plot, um, take some more trees down to the south here, open this up and, uh, and get, you know, kind of a variety of fruit trees growing. So this is a little bit of an experiment. We'll see how these do. All right, we're back here in one of my hinge cut zones. So I've done quite a bit of hinge cutting uh, just to knock some canopy down, get rid of a lot of this more mature timber um, and just get some, you know, nice successional growth growing, which is, you know, this I did last spring. So a lot of stuff is popping up in here. And before it gets too thick, um, what I really wanted to get going is some thermal cover, some spruce trees. So I got a hundred Norway spruce trees. Um, it was actually awesome. Our local conservation district here in Portage, Michigan, um, I got these for 80 cents a piece with local pickup. So $80 for a hundred spruce trees. And I plugged them basically all through some of these areas where I'm wanting to encourage bedding. Um, this one gets a lot of sunlight. I think I did probably 25 of them in here. Did a couple by the food plot. And then if you remember from kind of our map, um, we did a lot of hinge cut bedding all down along the, um, the swamp transition line. Anywhere that was kind of open, getting nice sunlight like this, again, we started, started putting some spruce trees in. All right, so the big reason why I did all of this is, uh, is just some differentiators. So when you look at my property, when you look at the surrounding properties, like my whole swamp section, there is not a lot of one, we'll start with the spruce trees. There's almost zero thermal cover. Um, when it gets to snow in here, when it gets towards the late season, I really don't have many deer at all. Even if I've got food in my food plot, they move on to some other areas, really mainly I think across the street where there is, there's just better thermal cover. So obviously these spruce trees are gonna take a while to provide thermal cover for deer. It's something I wish I would have kind of known about, recognized, maybe had just more knowledge in general of deer habitat and, and things that you need on properties because I would have done this you know, nine years ago when I bought the property and I'd be sitting in much better shape, but you gotta start somewhere. And that's one thing, that is one area that my property lacks a ton of, and that is thermal cover. So a lot of it, I shouldn't say a lot of it. Half of it is situated close to food in the in the hinge cut bedding that I showed you guys where I had planted a couple. You know, the other is uh, along the swamp transition line just to give the deer a place to, to bed in the winter and hopefully stay on and relate to my property a little better. Apple trees, another thing. I don't know if they're going to grow in my swamp or not. These two from Tractor Supply, they're going to kind of be my test dummies. Um, and if they do, I would definitely like to get more because there is not much from, you know, neighbors that I've talked to other properties that I've, you know, been on to help people track or turkey hunted or scouted or whatever, um, kind of my whole general area does not have a lot of people with fruit trees. So that is another thing, another differentiator where if I can have more deer relating to my property because I've got that and nobody else does, that's a big plus. Let's just hope they grow. Then the miscanthus, you guys, really that is just the need for edge around my food plot. You know, I did miscanthus last or two years ago and it actually grew. So I know that it works. Um, and I've been doing plot screen in years prior and you know, the years where my plot screen did really well, uh, my food plot was better, even if it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a screen like you see on TV. If it was just some edge, it gave the deer something to, um, transition from you know woods to food plot just having that there um honestly two years ago was the best plot screen that i had and you know that was some of the best uh pictures and action that i had in my food plot so differentiator there too also honestly i don't think most of the fields most of the other food plots and things like that that i've seen with the exception of one neighbor um there's not a lot of screening around plots and stuff like that too so again those are kind of three three things that would be you know differentiators hopefully for my property that's gonna just continue to make the deer hunting even better so i hope you guys enjoyed that i'll keep you posted on how everything does if you did like this video do me a favor hit that like button down below also don't forget to subscribe we'll see you guys again soon thank you for tuning in remember be a sportsman make a sportsman